I was born here and uh, all my siblings were born here. And unfortunately, my mother also died here. For my family, it's uh, both a story of birth and death. It's a lot of nostalgia. From this hospital to the place where I was born, it's around 17 kilometers. Nowadays it's a little bit easy because there is a health center in a radius of around 200 meters. So it's kind of easy. But way back it used to be so bad. Just imagine in the middle of the night there is a pregnant woman who has to be delivered at the hospital 17 kilometers away. But there is no motorcycle, no car, not even in the neighborhood. It used to be that bad. My name is Dan Ayevali. I am a Solutions Now Africa reporter. I'm looking at grassroots responses to the healthcare expenditure challenge in Uganda. And I am starting from my family home. So I'm at home. Uh, I'm going to have a conversation with my father. I just want to know how hard always it was to take care of six children, especially as a single parent. How affordable and how unaffordable was it for him? And uh, I mean, let's do this. Like for you and beyond you, like maybe for you it might have been different because you... It was different. Because you, you, were, you were a teacher? Because I had money. Yes. <laughs> 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 but then it could be different. Because I had money, mm. I was a teacher. I used to get money. And even today, I get money, although it is literal. <laughs> It is not much. I get some little money, little, little money. So it was so not, it was not so difficult. Mm. But for the others, of course, there's... Yeah. For the others, the village mates, of course, it was difficult. Because not everybody could get uh, money. For, for us, we were lucky. Chisizi Hospital, a private, not-for-profit, but fee-paying facility strategically located to serve communities from over six districts in southwestern Uganda. From Rukunjiri, Ruchiga, Rubanda, Kanungu, Tungamotu Kabali, the iconic amenity means a lot to many families. My dad treated us here for all conditions like malaria, tuberculosis, pneumonia, and diseases of hygiene. These were our biggest survival threats. Something, though, is unique about this hospital. You come to the hospital and you don't have money. We don't send you away. There's a way we manage. Mm. Somehow we talk, <laughs> but we don't send away patients. It is only human that you don't turn patients away. But you also wonder, who pays the bills? How does the hospital remain operational? Because look, these communities are very poor. Maybe to paint the picture for you, I was the only kid in my primary school who had shoes on. Context? People would come late to the hospital because they don't have money at the time of coming to the hospital. And this would also mean that uh, by the time you decide to come to the hospital, it's late, therefore the treatment becomes expensive, or even you, the complications are high, and therefore you might even lose this person. But also importantly, people were even actually running out from the hospital. I'm admitted, I don't have the money before the treatment is, is done, because I know they'd be charging me money, then I would run away. In 1996, Chisizi Hospital set out to turn the tide. It pioneered a community health insurance model to counter all these deeply entrenched challenges.
fortunately we had um, groups in the communities they called burial groups. Yes, Avengos. Avengos, yes. Mm. So the arrangement was if, for example, Dan, you have somebody who's sick or another family loses a relative, a person, the Angos group would arrange for burial expenses, would arrange to come and do the counseling, but they have a pocket of money they keep, and this is managed by a chairman, a treasurer, and a secretary. And we also observe that 98% of the population, the catchment population of this hospital, were belonging to Engos groups. So we took advantage of that and said to the groups, why then do you wait for the death to occur? Why don't you instead, the money you keep for funeral expenses, this money is given to the hospital upfront so that when members are sick, then they can come and get treatment. And that's how it all started. Like growing up, it was very hard for me to understand. People are coming together to bury each other, literally. Pull money for coffins, portion bins, for mourners at a burial. But they can't come together to save each other's lives. Like, why don't you use the same energy to save each other? Like, why would you find pride in buying me a coffin or burying me than pulling resources to save my life? Abantu at first, bakabara guza. Aguze mbuzi, aguze ente, aguze chivira, aguali zomuntu. Ninga ba ntabandi ba famu chenu. Omuntu aguara, kuenda kwega nyesete, ba muhunama, umara za kuchira, waza mu mbirizi, waza mu nchi. Mgeni waza mu mbita jizeku jangu, wana tala za kubaji, wana tala za kubaji. Hato omuntu kwa kujira kwa li, mkwe yonjara, mkwe yonjara. Finally omuntu afana kufata kajirechi, ataka jemu iguadu. Ninga wa muhisa membere ya jirechi, ya habire mbi. Kwa nka this time, ayitu jire muskimu. Omuntu ya kwa ato atimidetiri. Some of these rates are really, I mean, they are too good to believe. Like, uh, if you have a family of 10 people, you pay 120,000 a year, a full year. That's 10,000 a month. If you divide, um, if you divide by 12 months, that is uh, 10,000. And your family of 10 people is treated for a full year. It's hard to believe, to be honest. It's hard to believe. Omuntu ya maroka shatu baje ngo mhm ngo aze seta za kiseziri ko yongera ngo aziri ko yongera hati ashi bari ngo mwana utaregambira babuze muzire yari ine kadawoli ya amuje ta ati ya kiziri ngukuruga mukashesha ya ijuna kange ngo utake ijunire aga kwa aga kwatire mu bikuta kwena ngo bamusibure doctor je ngo ngo is fine is fine akwa omushaho no buyo kureba omuzire robora manya muno ngukira omushaho omuntu bamusibure ataka kiziri kana se bajyo umuntu mukuru nkanye ya na nyine nkanyumonia mbire nta Tini ne shonga, baje ngo bakambire ngo toyine shonga, deni bakusibure. Kwena ngi sete zite yongera, ekikuru cyo nakiri nchi a sete. Ko ngahati nabaza kusibura ranga, ndi kunda hura ntaka bire muje. Ngo ango ngo ango mu ngo mukazi wenga hori toro kubi, nda a na ngo nezo ndashikanye ntaza na hura nagira ne nanka, ndi nategwa no mutwe. Health insurance has for long been touted as a magic bullet. But for Uganda a plan to implement the National Health Scheme has been in the offing since the 80s. The Ugandan Minister for Health, Dr. Jen Rutha Cheng, announced in April 2023 that they were in the final stages of working on the country's health insurance bill. She promised that it will soon be presented in the Cabinet and then Parliament. Approximately 500 kilometers from Rukunjiri district is Namutumba district. Because of its location, swampy and drenched for most part of the year, malaria is the biggest challenge for most communities here. Officials from Mukonte Health Center, with help from Action Aid, a not-for-profit organization, traveled to Chisizi to benchmark this model a few years ago. We went ahead and uh, looked out for areas where they, they had a similar scheme. 
so that uh, we take the team, the Bukonte team, and some staff from the organization to benchmark uh, how the community health insurance team works so that they can come and duplicate it. So he sees it in, yeah. in, in uh, Western Uganda, Rukunjiri to be specific. They, they visited the community, they visited the health center, and uh, they saw how the whole scheme worked. They talked to the, to the um, they call them like subscribers of the insurance scheme. They don't have enough space. We want the, the scheme to grow, uh, and it is even growing. And this is the start, we are having 900. And yet we are deployed only for like 500. Now it is well me. Supporting next year, what will happen? Because we had not mobilized the whole, whole community, the whole, what, whole district of Namtumba. We are just the same part of Namtumba and Bugwe. Despite the unique challenges faced by both communities, they share a pervasive and formidable issue the prevalence of malaria cases. Malaria treatment in Uganda may literally deplete a family's savings to zero. We find 23-year-old Lydia Kutesa recovering from the second attack in just one month. Almost every month I fall sick. Every month, every month. As I can fall sick, like about a little bit. I can even fall sick from the beginning of the last we receive very many medical conditions. Commonly is malaria. Because of recently, there was, an, there was an outbreak of malaria. I think you heard even over the news, and it was in the parliament. The area MP presented a case concerning unknown disease where children urinate blood and at times they bleed. So that was malaria. So we had the, uh, an increased, we had a surge of malaria in the, in the area. Like in Chisizi, communities in Namutumba pay premiums through preformed groups. Solutions Now Africa is meeting one of the groups to understand if it is really working. The uptake of health insurance is less than 2% in Uganda. An estimated 38% of Uganda's health expenditures are paid by individuals through out-of-pocket costs, followed by development partners, the government, and others. The East African country is the only one in the region that has not passed a national health insurance scheme. It also has some of the highest out-of-pocket costs for health in the region. Though the scheme has helped several lives, there are a host of challenges that still limit access to health. These issues, the scheme may not be able to address. Issues of drug stockout will arise from time to time. Issues of uh, attitude of the health personnel, issues of uh, late coming, issues around um, the distance that people have to move to access health. There could be a reason to smile as regards the growth of the health insurance sector in Uganda. But wait a minute, one last concern. The question is, has the government abandoned its people? You will move across Uganda and very many non-government players are supporting people to form community health insurance groups. But at the same time, the national bill to cover the entire population keeps on getting passed. Like, where are our priorities? Where is the government's priorities?